Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to today's webinar, Amazon Simple Email Service. So today we're going to go over some basic points around uh, the Amazon Simple Email Service, which is the newest service to launch in the AWS uh, suite of, of, of the products. We're going to go over what email is and the e Amazon Simple Email Service um, design, what the offering is, what our highlights are, the concepts around the service, how we price it, how you can get up and running very quickly, resources and tools to point you different directions when you need further information, and then finally at the end we'll go over some uh, questions. So from a very high level, and I, I'm going to assume that everyone on the call has a pretty thorough understanding of email, but just to make sure we start uh, you know, with, with the, the groundwork here, email is composed of two different sections. You've got your envelope information, which is what we consider the, the source, uh, the destination, you know, included the T, excuse me, the two, the CCC, the BCC line would be your reply to, uh, the return path header. And then within that envelope, you've actually got the message itself, which conveys the, 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 the message you're trying to get across to the recipient, whomever or whatever that may be. So those are the two different types that we look at within the Amazon Simple Email Service as well to, to mimic uh, the, the email uh, protocol. For Amazon SES, we let you send marketing and transactional email to customers in a quick and cost-effective manner. And so you call a simple API, and you can have access to a high-quality, scalable email infrastructure that allows you to efficiently communicate to your customers. We think the biggest benefits for this service is or are that you can begin sending in minutes, and also we give you real-time feedback on how your email is performing. So there are many ways to send email today. Amazon SES, however, fulfills the need for customers who are sending email from Amazon EC2 who don't want to support their own software applications. So what this means is you can point your email service at uh, Amazon SES, and we will facilitate the email transport and heavy lifting for you. Also, if you're sending from an internal or third-party solution and you wish to eliminate the additional complexity and expense of hosting that service or going to the third-party provider, you can offload that to us as well. So some of the highlights of Amazon SES, we've got five here, are the first one, and you'll see the, the theme here as well. We, we fit into the, um, the, the model of the, the AWS family. Uh, a lot of these you know, span whatever service you're looking at. Uh, but for us, we fit into the simple category because we really eliminate the complexity of, of hosting email or having to outsource to another third-party provider. You can also uh, call Amazon SES via an array of different uh, APIs that we make available. You can use Java, .NET, PHP, Perl, or an HTTPS interface. Also, we consider this to be highly reliable, and we've got the full backing of the Amazon's uh, cloud computing infrastructure, which is based on proven technology. And we're optimized for the highest levels of uptime and availability. We consider ourselves to be scalable, so we intelligently grow with your business as your email needs grow as well. We want you to be able to rely on us to, to a scale with your, uh, with your service over time. And again, we are based on uh, proven scalable uh, Amazon technology. We're AWS compatible, so we play well with others in the, the AWS family. Um, we're designed for ease of use, especially with Amazon EC2 and AWS Elastic Beanstalk services. We offer a free usage tier for emails that are originating from uh, other AWS services as well. And finally, we're very inexpensive. Uh, we want you to only pay for what you use. Uh, we don't require any fees up front. There are no fixed commitments. Um, and you also uh, you, 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 know, you, you pay for, for what you eat, essentially. Uh, we have low charges for the emails that are sent in the data transfer as well. And I'll go into detail about that in a few, uh, few slides from now, but break down the different components that make up the, the pricing structure. What we do believe is a very competitive offering. So the concepts, and these are the, 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 the foundational ideas that uh, you know, it, it's important to wrap your head around when you're using Amazon SES, is the email sending is the, the first and foremost. We have two different types of email, um, outbound email um, types that we support, formatted or raw message, and each one fits a specific use case. 
if you call the email, send email API, we will actually format the message for you to meet uh, RFC protocol, and all you provide to us is the, the, the basic header. So from, the message is coming from uh, the two address or addresses, including the BCC and CCC subject and the body. Send raw email API actually allows you to manually specify your own email headers and the MIME types within the, the message, uh, message body. And so depending on whether you want to be in maximum control of the message composition, or you just want to hand over the basic headers to Amazon SDS and let us send that message on your behalf, you have that choice of, of uh, either uh, API to use. The next important concept is the idea of feedback. And so in Amazon uh, SDS, we've made it very convenient for you to get a list of, of feedback metrics that we think are very important to enable you to have uh, a successful sending program. Specifically, if you call Get Send Statistics, we will provide you the delivery attempt numbers, the rejected messages, and uh, finally your hard bounces and complaints. And let's spend a few seconds going over each one of those. Uh, and again, this is all in technical documentation as well, so you can reference that later, and we'll be getting to some useful links uh, further in the, the, um, the presentation. So delivery attempts are messages that Amazon SES has uh, suge successfully taken from you when you invoke the service and attempted to send to the ISP. Rejected messages are those messages that we have actually dropped in the sending process for, uh, for whatever reason, uh, specifically around rejected messages now, it's usually because the message is um, in low quality and we don't want to risk sending it, on, sending it on to the ISP. Hard bounces are persistent failures with an ISP where a message cannot be delivered. Uh, typical uh, examples of this are an email address doesn't exist, um, or there's a permanent network failure. Uh, domain has permanently gone offline or was uh, mistyped, something of that nature, and doesn't have the correct DNS records behind it. And complaints, these are, this is a notion that many folks in the email industry are um, uh, aware of, but just in case you aren't, when an email recipient marks a message as spam within their web client, they go to the this is spam button, that actually triggers on the back end with the participating ISPs a message that is fired off and lets the sender know that the uh, recipient has marked that message as spam. And we actually take the hard bounce messages that the ISPs provide as well as the complaint messages, which we feel is a very important piece of knowing uh, how your audience is receiving your mail, and we forward those on to you. You can either specify a, a return path parameter when you're invoking SES, and we will forward these, these uh, notifications directly to that address, or since it's not required, we'll forward it back to, your, um, to the, uh, uh, the from address that you've used for that particular message. So now we get into the concept around how to manage your simple email service account. Um, we have some unique uh, parameters or uh, ways to measure the, the effectiveness of email. And at the end of the day, it really is about uh, how the, the, you know, the recipient uh, population uh, views the messages being sent. You know, do they like the messages? Uh, are they, you know, are, are they uh, uh, complaining about them? Are the ISP is able to deliver them? And to also complement that, that feedback that we provide from the previous slide, we also have sending limits in place. And this is to ensure that we are giving every user the maximum amount of exposure in the system possible while also protecting the deliverability and the uh, IP reputation of Amazon SES. We want to ensure that we have the maximum amount of good quality mail going through SES as possible while also preventing um, any uh, you know, black hat senders or uh, low quality mail from, from leaving as well as much as possible. How we do this is one way is through the Get Send Quota uh, API. You can actually call this, and it provides two different data points back to you. You get a sending quota, which is the maximum amount you can send in a 24-hour period. And so this is really just an easy way, and you can query the, this API at any time, uh, as many times as you want, um, and it will tell you within a 24-hour period what our system will allow you to send up to in the, the actual number of messages 
uh, uh, outbound. Um, sending rate is kind of complementary to that, but that's the TPS that we allow, the transactions per second. It's how many messages you can send per second using our service. And you know we can go into implementation uh, details uh, later on if, if that makes sense, or you can view the forums and technical documentation. But sending rate really comes into play when you, uh, if you have, uh, if you're multi-threading or calling the service in parallel, and you have different instances spun up calling the the SES uh, APIs, and you can have them uh, running at the same time. Your TPS will um, help guide you how many um, connections you can have per second. So. That's a nice segue into what we consider access levels. And this is, you know, piggybacking on the get send quota idea. You know, you have a number of messages that you can send via 24-hour period and the number of messages you can send per second. Um, access levels are another way in which we try to grow with your needs in using the service. Anyone who subscribes to Amazon SES, you can go to our product detail page and hit the, the sign me up button. When you sign up for SES, you're in the sandbox. And that is meant for you to be able to give them a flavor of what the service is like, how you could potentially interact with the service, if the functionality of the service uh, meets your needs. Um, and, and really, this is a place where you know, it's not meant for production mail sending, per se, but it's rather just to get an idea from a technical perspective what the, 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 um, how to interact with the service. So the sandbox has two limitations that are important I, I think I should call out here. The first is that you can only send up to 200 emails at, or to recipients a, a day. And so by that we mean either one message to multiple recipients or one message to one recipient. Really we count the volume as being the, the per recipient send count. For the sandbox you can send up to 200. The other restriction that we have here is uh, you can only send two and from email addresses that you verified. And we'll get into what that means as well here in a second, but from a, a, just a, a, a glimpse into what that, what that means is email that has been sent a notification that you clicked a link on to verify that you have control or own that email address. And it's a, a, a defense mechanism to ensure that we're protecting each mailer or each customer in our service from having another customer potentially or accidentally uh, use uh, the same from address. So Sandbox, you get instant access once you re uh, register for the service, assuming you go through the, 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 the steps and um, you know, everything um, you know, uh, uh, works out correctly. Um, once you're in the Sandbox and you decide you want to get greater access to the service, you can request production access for higher volume and fewer restrictions. So at that point, when you're in the production uh, environment, you get up to 1,000 messages a day. And um, you can also uh, send to any email address that you want. Um, is, you know, the restriction on the from address still uh, is imposed, so you can only send from addresses that you own or have shown that you have control over, but you can send to any email address at that point. Now, this requires going and filling out a form. Again, the <laughs> links will be uh, here later. And we'll, we'll also send these links out at the end of the, the, the webinar. I know there are a lot to keep up with, and we want to make sure that you have easy access to them. But there's a specific form that you'll fill out which will uh, take you through the production access uh, process. So once you receive production access, you move into this stage uh, that we call ramping or the ramp up. And what this is, is a way for Amazon SES to learn about your sending habits. Um, what, what, what's your cadence throughout the day? What sort of volume needs do you have? We want to grow with you dynamically as you send more, and um, we, we uh, uh, can track that you're sending high-quality mail. We want to also grow with you and allow you to send more to meet whatever needs you may have moving forward. Now, there are several ways to go about doing a successful ramp, um, and we've, we've provided some suggestions in the, the Getting Started Guide, uh, in the, the, the development guide that's on our site, but we we suggest that people slowly point their mail at Amazon SES from their existing solution over to SES, and you just have a switch. And you determine how much mail you can send out uh, up to your quota. Remember, you can find out your quota by calling the API. And you send up to that quota in a 24-hour period. And as long as you're sending mail um, over uh, you know, the you know, continual over a period of time, then we'll grow with you. 
Um, also, if this is a new service, uh, let's say you don't have an existing email solution in place today, then we suggest that you just incrementally ramp that email off to uh, SES if, if possible. Uh, either send up to the amount, the, the, the maximum amount in your quota, and then queue the rest, uh, or just slowly start um, uh, having email go out of your system if that's possible. And we understand that these aren't perfect use cases, and there will be situations where people can't fit into the standard ramp plan. If that's the case, we do have a form that folks can submit and let us know. Uh, we require some additional information about your sending program, who you are, some uh, links to uh, information on your website that, that most emailers um, we believe will have, such as privacy policy and opt-in policy. Um, but you know, submit that form, we'll review it, and then if it looks like something that we can work with you on, we'll get back in touch with you individually. Um, I will note that if everyone runs to that form today <laughs> and, and fills it out, uh, there might be a little bit more of a, a, a queue time than normal. We try to get a uh, turnaround on those within uh, within a business day, but sometimes it does take longer than that. So uh, just keep that in mind. Um, finally, deliverability. We know this is a really important key that a lot of uh, a lot of customers are interested in, and prospects as well, rightfully so. You want to make sure that your mail is being delivered uh, and getting to its intended destination. So to that end, we have all of the, the proper and available authentication protocols uh, supported today. You can send via uh, a DKIM, so you can, you can add the, the DKIM headers to the message, um, and then we will make sure that the header is inserted on the outbound uh, envelope. We offer SPF and sender ID as well. And in the technical documentation, we spell out exactly how you can change your DNS to include uh, our IP space, so when a sender ID check is done, um, it comes back as, as uh, authenticated. We also monitor ISP feedback to gauge what the email quality looks like, and this is done in real time. So we look at all of the different inputs from that the, the ISPs are, are sharing with us. And if you recall, uh, if you use uh, get feedback, we will submit the uh, or pass along the balances and the complaints to you as the customer. We also look at that information from our side as well. Um, and over time, we will look at how many complaints is your email generating, how many uh, balances uh, is your email program generating, that sort of thing, and some other things that are under the cover, uh, kind of the secret sauce of our, our, uh, our system here. But we take all of that into account, and that's how we determine the, the type of quality uh, over time uh, that we're seeing the, the ISP give us feedback on, and also kind of the quality of mail that we're sending out, and that's how we maintain a high deliverability standard. So moving on. Amazon SES pricing is what we consider to be very simple and very uh, cost effective. Um, we have really tried to price this at a level where it makes it useful for customers to uh, invoke our service uh, without having to worry about uh, some you know, expensive investment um, in, in, in enabling them to, to, send, uh, to send email out. And to that end, we've broken down the, the email uh, components into two pieces. The first is cost per thousand. And so that's your CPM, and this is an industry standard term. This means how much are you paying for every thousand email messages that are sent. And so our rate here is across the board flat rate of 10 cents per thousand messages. And just to be clear here, uh, again, the, the, we consider a message to either be an email message that's sent to one recipient or an email message sent to multiple recipients, but each recipient is considered a send, if you will. So it's a cost per message is sent. Data transfer is the other half of the equation here. Uh, and this falls you know, nicely in line with the rest of the AWS services. Uh, and from an AWS perspective, we normally charge uh, you know, for the data consumption in and then the data consumption out. And this covers our costs and in, 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 uh, making sure that we can support your, your use case. Um, so real high level, data transfer in is 10 cents per gig. You get a free gig out, your first gig, and then up to 10 terabytes after that is 15 cents per gig. And as you can see from the chart here, the price goes down. Uh, so we, we feel that this is very, very cost effective on uh, both the, the price per messages that you're sending and then also the size of the messages that are going out. Now, real quickly, why you might see a delta between um, uh, data transfer in and data transfer out is, for instance, if you pass content off via the send uh, 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 raw email uh, API, 
and you specify that you're sending to multiple recipients, well, that data in will be less than the data out because we're actually consuming that data one time, or that, 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 that data via the call one time, and then we're sending it out multiple times depending, depending on how many uh, recipients you specify. So that may result in cheaper data in pr uh, price, but uh, a more expensive data out price. Um, let's go into a few examples, though, to, to really break this apart. Just giving you two high-level, easy, rounded uh, numbers here so we can kind of uh, get an idea of what a bill would look like. If you send 1,000 messages to one recipient per day, so this is 1,000 messages, each message is to a different recipient and only one recipient per 24-hour period, and your content, your, your, your message size itself is 10Ks, or 10 kilobytes. From a high level, monthly aggregate perspective, that's 31,000 recipients that you've sent to. That's 3.1 gigs that you've sent into SES, and 3.1 gigs that you've transferred out of SES. Because remember, it's one message per recipient. So for the month, we're going to take 31,000 recipients times the CPM of 10 cents, and then the data transfer fee, which is in uh, 10 cents, out first gig is free, next uh, gigs uh, up to uh, the terabyte level are 15 cents per gig. And that gives us a grand whopping total of $3.73 for 31,000 messages sent to over a month span, totaling uh, 6.2 gigs when you're taking into account in and out data transfer. So let's bump that up then. Not everyone's going to send 10K uh, messages. These are relatively lightweight. Uh, we consider that the, the most likely be, you know, in the, the area of transactional messages or system notifications. If you make your content more heavyweight, let's say you add a lot of, um, you know, a lot of text to it, or there are a lot of links, or for whatever reason there's just a lot of text that's being referenced in that content, uh, the outbound content, say you hit the 100K mark. It's the same scenario. Otherwise, though, 1,000 messages outbound, each one's to one recipient. The total uh, size of the content is 100 uh, kilobytes. 31,000 messages sent per month. As you can see, the data transfer has increased now, so it's 31 gigs in uh, and 31 gigs out. However, now, based on the, uh, the metrics, that's $10.70 for the month. So here's a, a breakdown. You can kind of get an idea of where the... Uh, the ranges fall depending on what your particular use case is. Obviously, the, the smaller the messages, the less expensive it will be for data transfer. The more recipients you send to, uh, the more expensive it will be from a CPM perspective. So you can turn those dials uh, depending on whatever your uh, particular needs are. We also offer a free tier, and we think this is pretty, uh, pretty uh, innovative in the, the AWS space. We really want um, we want to offer users uh, a, a great way to send mail in a reliable fashion, in a highly scalable fashion today, where they might not have that option uh, otherwise. Uh, so if you're using Amazon EC2, and either you haven't uh, you've been using it to send email for whatever reasons, uh, you know, the, the, the functionality didn't support your particular use case, or you'd like to you know, point your messages from port 25 on EC2 to Amazon SDS, we created a special free tier for you. You can get started using Amazon SDS today, uh, sending 2,000 messages for free each day when you call Amazon SDS, either using Amazon EC2 an instance directly, or you invoke it through uh, the AWS Elastic Beanstalk. Uh, and we've, we've done this in such a way that we think many applications are going to be able to operate completely within a free tier limit and potentially at the end of the month uh, from a CPM perspective not have um, and not incur any costs. And so we really hope that customers find this valuable in getting up and running and uh, uh, you know, allowing uh, Amazon SDS to complement their current sending program from the cloud. So how do you get started using Amazon SDS? We've talked about the concepts, we've talked about the highlights and, and what the uh, bill might look like, but how do you really dig in and begin using it? Well, we think you know, it can be broken down into five quick steps uh, to, to reaffirm re, uh, the simplicity of this and to get you up and running quickly. Uh, first thing you have to do, and this is, this is indicative of any AWS service, is you have to subscribe. Uh, we think this is, you know, this is pretty self-explanatory, but you go to the Amazon SES detail page and you click the, the Sign Me Up button 
and you're going to have a sandbox access. Remember, sandbox is the, the, the testing, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, staging area, if you will, where you're restricted to 200 messages a day, and you can only send to and from email addresses that you verify. So once you're in the sandbox, we've been talking about verification of email addresses, you'll have to verify email addresses to create your own whitelist of addresses that you can send from or to in a sandbox. And so what, what happens here is you call an API, or you use the script that we provide, a Perl script, which is uh, hopefully, uh, you know, maybe it's a very easy uh, way to you know, choose between whether you want to call the API directly or in our tool to invoke it. You call the API, and our service will automatically send an email notification to the address you've passed as a parameter to be verified. And in that email, there's going to be a link that you need to click on. You click on it, our system will automatically add it to your account's whitelist. If it's not clicked on, obviously, after a period of time, uh, or it didn't go to the right address, or for whatever reason, the owner of that email uh, account doesn't want to uh, validate that, that account to be sending, uh, or that address to be sending from your account, then it won't be added to your whitelist. But once you have clicked on it, you've now got in that, the link that was sent to that email address that you passed over, you can send from or to that email address in the, uh, the sandbox. What we recommend in the sandbox when you're testing this out is to do it with several different email addresses that you, that you control. So, uh, for instance, I may do, uh, you know, foo at bar.com, verify that, uh, if I own it, of course and then verify uh, foo1 at bar.com. And then in the sandbox, I can send a message from foo at bar.com to foo1 at bar.com, or I can send it from foo at bar.com to foo at bar.com. Um, again, this is, it goes out, we go into more detail in the uh, developer guide as to exactly how to do this, but we want to make sure that folks understand that you do need to have a verified email address always sending from an account and then to an account as well if you're in the sandbox. The next step, number three, is the meat of the service, right? I mean, this is why we're all interested in uh, Amazon's email service in the first place. It's to enable you to send email. So here, now you've gotten your, verif your email address is verified. You call the Amazon SES script that we provide, uh, or through another service uh, or API. Uh, you, you can directly call the APIs that we offer, the, the, get, the send email or the, the send raw email. And you can uh, send a formatted or raw email message. This goes back to, do you want Amazon to handle the Amazon SES to handle the formatting, uh, where you just provide the headers, the to, from, and the, the subject and body, or do you want to specify your own MIME parts and, and add in uh, your own customized X headers? Well, you can do that from the, uh, the, the raw email. So this actually triggers a message to be requested uh, from the Amazon Simple Email Service to be sent, and then we send it on out. Next step is, once you're satisfied with how the, the sandbox is working, you can request production access. And so here, if you recall, I mentioned there was a separate form that you needed to fill out. This is the Amazon SES production access form, and you can find that conveniently on the Contact Us page on the, the AWS uh, portal. So this is a form where you provide just additional information, um, and we will review your, uh, your request and, and try to get back in a timely manner, usually within one business day. Um, and at that point, once you're, once you're uh, approved, you are um, given production access, and at that point, the restrictions are limited from the number of messages you can send. We go from 200 to 1,000. You can send to email, any email address, and then you can use the Get Feedback API to find out what are your balances, what are your complaints, uh, how many deliveries have you uh, sent, and this is also partitioned over time for you to, so you can slice and dice the data in any way that you want. Again, we provide a simple script for you to use as well. So that should get you up and running, sending email. Now, we discussed the sending limit uh, uh, parameters uh, that we have on, on SES, and we discussed ramping. I'd like to go into a bit more detail as to what that means from, a, from an empirical data point perspective. Like, what does your quota look like, and what, um, you know, what kind of time uh, values are we looking at as well um, uh, to, to get to whatever quota you're looking to, to get to, to match your sending program. So again, I know I keep stressing it, but I'll stress it again. When you're in production access, you get 1,000 messages per day. And you can send any email address that you want. And your TPS is also increased to 10, TP, uh, 10 messages per second. Now, this is a, a chart to give you a rough idea of how a normal program sending high quality mail, consistently increasing volume over time, but not going over their quota per day, what that ramp schedule looks like. 
And let me also stress that this is, it can seem um, heavyweight in the beginning, but really you only have to do this process once. Once you've ramped whatever volume you need to, uh, to meet your system uh, uh, requirements from a thinning program perspective, you're good to go. So over time, again, general rule of thumb here, but over time you can follow this chart here. And if, you're, if you just need 1,000 messages, you're passing the production access, you can begin sending up to 1,000 immediately. 10,000, usually around three days. 100,000 up to 10 days and a million uh, a day up to two weeks. Again, caveat here that you're sending high quality mail and increasing the volume of mail that you're sending per day over time. We also have uh, a section in the developer guide which uh, breaks this down further, kind of what you, what, what you can expect planning ahead, your migration strategies and such, which uh, we hope you find helpful. If you need to send in excess of what is listed above and you don't believe you can match this uh, ramp schedule, you can submit the Amazon SCS limit increase form. We'll look over that form. Uh, we'll, we'll analyze your answers, and then we may reach out to you for further information as well if, if we need some more to help us come to, uh, to a, a conclusion that, that really helps you know, get you up and running uh, quickly. But also we want to do this in a way that uh, we really ensure that the deliverability of the system is maintained and intact and the reputation is protected for the other senders as well. So, um, you know, Please, please keep that in mind when you're going through the form. More information is always better. So finally, um, we have noticed since we've launched that some users are um, uh, taking this verbatim and strictly sending up to a certain number of messages, uh, but that's the only, the only metric they're trying to meet. We need you to be sending what you would consider production email. So what this means is you need to be sending to actual real email addresses that are in your file, um, not just test email addresses. Uh, we need you to be sending uh, real content that you'll be sending to recipients as well. So um, if you have a system notification system, we need you to send some of those messages through us to the actual addresses that would be receiving the system notifications and the content that's indicative of those notifications. If you're sending marketing emails, same thing applies Send uh, to a a cross-section of who your, um, your uh, recipient list would be in the same content you'd send out. This is, this is really important because we can't, we can't uh, accurately ramp you if we're just seeing messages being sent out to random test accounts or random content um, uh, that, that's not necessarily indicative of what your program will look like in the end. So please keep that in mind. So the limits, just to, to sum them up here for Amazon SES to make sure that we have, you know, giving uh, as much transparency as possible and enable you to use the system as um, uh, uh, you know, appropriately as possible. You can send up to 50 email addresses per message. So this is either, uh, you know, per field, so 52 addresses, 50 CC addresses, or aggregate amongst all the headers. So for instance, you could send uh, 20 BCC addresses, uh, 20 CC addresses, and 10 addresses uh, in the two line. Also, the size of your message can be up to 10 megabytes. Um, we don't allow messages that are over that size, but we do feel that this size will adequately um, uh, address any uh, needs uh, that you know, users will have to send content out today. And then also for ver uh, verified addresses, we'll allow you to have 100, up to 100 addresses on your whitelist at any time. We are listening to uh, feedback, though, and, and we welcome your feedback on these limits, that they're not meeting your needs, and we will certainly take that into account in the future um, when we um, uh, you know, uh, review the, address, the limits that we have in place. So we've been talking a lot about the different places that you can go to to review uh, the documentation that we have available online. Uh, you know, where the resources are that you can hit further information. And now I just want to break those down into different categories to really make it crisp as to where you can go to find certain information about Amazon Simple Email Service. There's a lot of information out there. It can be overwhelming at first if you're brand new to the service. But uh, trust me, <laughs> we've got most, uh, most questions answered if you just happen to, to look in the right place. So hopefully this will give you a good uh, map for that. We have the detail page, which gives you a great overview of what the service is. Our FAQs, where we find a lot of questions that uh, uh, customers in the community or even prospects have, are answered. We really tried to think long and hard uh, before we launched as to what different questions people would have, and we we found for the most part these are these provide pretty good coverage. So that would be a good place to start if you have particular questions about the service after you've looked over uh, what the service is. 
our documentation is really for the technical community, um, or if you just want to have more information about uh, from, a, from a technical perspective how Amazon SCS works, uh, we have a getting started guide, which gives you a great overview of what you need to do, and it kind of reiterates the different steps I went through in a previous slide, but what you need to do to get up and running, um, how to invoke the service, uh, you know, how to get your AWS account set up properly, that sort of stuff. We have a, uh, a developer's guide, which really uh, breaks down uh, how the different components of the service work, how you can uh, how you can use the different APIs, and then we have a, a API guide, which shows you exactly what the APIs the service will accept, the data points, the output uh, requirements, that sort of thing. We also have tools. If you go to this link, uh, we have scripts available, SDKs uh, available for uh, Amazon uh, SES. Um, like I said, we do support PHP. We support Java, .NET, Perl, and HTTPS. For support, if you're wondering where you can go next to find out information about your particular use case that has not been covered in the other uh, the other areas, such as FAQ or or in the documentation, the technical documentation, we really urge you to go to the uh, community forum. This is a great place where you've seen a ton of activity lately, which is uh, you know which is great. We want our our uh, user base to be as pumped as, as we are, and <laughs> to this point, everyone is. Um, it shows a lot of adoption as well in the, 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 the users who are helping uh, answer each other's questions. But this is a place you can go, ask questions that you have, see what other people have asked. There's great search functionality on there that you can type in terms to see if the issue's been addressed before and give you ideas on how to use the service as well. Um, the contact us page, uh, this is just you know a, a kind of a portal as to who to go to if you're having problems using uh, SES uh, from an AWS account perspective, billing perspective, uh, or if you're having issues with the service in general. We are offered as part of the AWS Premium Support Package, so if you're subscribed to that, uh, definitely feel free to um, go through that channel and open up uh, cases uh, however you want with premium support that they support, um, uh, and you know they'll be able to assist you. And finally, for those of you who are interested in the sales uh, aspect of things, either um, sales opportunities or working with us further, uh, potentially in use cases that aren't covered on our documentation, um, or, or if you just like to speak to someone in sales, uh, feel free to, to go to this um, particular link and you can submit a sales contact us and someone from our uh, sales organization will be in touch shortly. Finally, the forms that are specific to AWS, that we've touched on uh, a few times here, but just to, to kind of close this out, uh, to leave you with this, this thought is, you know, we have the, the production access form, which is, You've been in the sandbox. You like what you see. You want full. Uh, you want production access, which will grant you the ability to send any email address that you want, and also to improve or uh, increase rather your sending uh, limits. You go to the SES production access form. The link is here. If, however, and a, there is a prerequisite here for the Amazon limit increase. Let me back up one step. <laughs> for production access form, you need to be subscribed to the service. That's a very important point. I'm sorry I didn't bring that up before. Um, we've had some confusion around that. You need to subscribe to the service. You get put into the sandbox. Then you, subs you fill out the form for production access, and we can put you into the production uh, staging area. Uh, but you do need to subscribe for the, uh, before you do that. The limit increase is you subscribe to the service, you filled out your form for production access, and you don't think that the ramping schedule is going to meet your needs. Fill out this form, and uh, myself or, or a member of my team will re review that request and uh, may reach out for further information or what have you. Um, but at that point, we can uh, uh, you know, see what we can do to help you better with your particular use case and your sending requirements. So that's the progression. You sign up for SES via the, the subscription, AWS subscription mechanism. You subscribe for, or you submit a form for production access. And then if for some reason you can't get the limits you need uh, through the normal ramping process, you can fill out the limit increase form. I just wanted to make a special uh, point here to thank everyone uh, up to this point for all the great feedback that we've received. Uh, like I said, the forums have just been uh, an amazing uh, breeding ground for, for more um, information, uh, great customer insight, uh, suggestions, feature requests, you name it. So thank you for all your feedback. Please keep it coming. Uh, we are definitely taking uh, heed of all the different suggestions that are being thrown out there and the questions that are being asked and ways that we could potentially um, refactor our communication to be more clear and concise moving forward. Uh, 
we don't have anything at this point to talk about in the way of uh, feature requests or a roadmap or anything like that. It's generally AWS policy not to talk about such things um, until we're really ready to commit to things. And we, we don't feel we're at a place right now with AWS or excuse me with SCS to do that. But again, we are listening to everything. We are aggressively prioritizing on the uh, on the back end to make sure that the next generation of this product really meets whatever needs that the community uh, is driving for us. And that's what we want to do. We want to be in parity with what our customers need moving forward. So having said that, I'm going to take a drink of water here and open up the, uh, the presentation to any questions that, that folks might have. Well, thanks, Chris. Uh, I do want to talk to everyone who's submitted a question. Uh, due to the high level of attendance today, uh, we've received an, a very, very high number of questions. We're going to try to move through these very quickly. We only have 15 minutes left in the webinar. If we're not able to get to your question today, again, Chris just showed you all the resources you can use to get your questions answered. Uh, we do want to address them. We do obviously want to teach about the service. And so we're going to just start going through these in order that they were asked uh, to be as fair as possible. Um, the first question is from George. Uh, he wants to know if there's a SMTP interface for SDS. Yep. Yeah. Great question, George. I'd appreciate you asking that. This is something we've been hearing, uh, you know, um, <laughs> not infrequently amongst our, um, our, our customer base. Um, we have heard of that request. We've, we've logged it. We've discussed it. Um, at this time, though, I can't commit to um, what the plans are for an SMTP, SMTP interface. We don't offer one right now. Um, moving forward, though, if we decide to, uh, you know, pull the trigger on that, we'll definitely let, let the, uh, our customer base know when it's you know, when the time's appropriate, if that happens. I think, it is, I think it is fair to say that it is one of the most requested features, and it wouldn't be a surprise to see it coming soon. Absolutely. We've also received quite a few questions about sort of the difference of this service compared to either, um, you know, running it on a Linux EC2 instance or running uh, a service like AWeber or iContact. Um, can you sort of address, you know, overall the differences of SDS? So if I understand the question correctly, you're asking where Amazon Simple Email Service fits into the spectrum of different email service providers available today on the market. That's true. And also, just how is, how is it different from running, uh, basically serving email on a Linux service on EC2? Great. Uh, so I'm not really familiar with how uh, on EC2 uh, you, you would invoke these, these other services. I do know that via EC2, you can, if, if an email service provides a, a programmatic interface, you can you know, invoke that uh, from the instance. Most likely or what you're doing, though, if you're, using, sending, or if you're sending email from EC2 is you're uh, um, accessing port 25 to push mail out that way. Um, for Amazon SES, um, again, you know, we, we are uh, hoping to uh, address the SMTP um, functionality soon, um, but right now you can access it via an API. We really find ourselves different in the space that, you know, it, we don't have a lot of added layers of complexity around getting uh, email out to your recipients to support your, your business needs. Um, you know, I can't go into details about what the other providers do, but uh, we really make it easy for someone to just get the, you know, the, 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 the basics of sending me an email out of the way, push it through on a, a technological level, and to really build on top of that to meet whatever their, their custom needs are. So Chris, Justin has the next question. He says they actually have to send emails on behalf of their customers. So what they want to do is place their from address in the from field, and he's wondering, how this could be done and if it would interfere with the SPF records. In this particular case, SPF, which uh, it, it, it keys off the return path, we have set up our domain. Uh, so all mail and the, the, the uh, return path from Amazon uh, Simple Email Service has an Amazon SES.com domain. SPS will be validated regardless of what from address you're sending from. However, if you're, you can insert your from address, obviously, for sender ID, you would just need to uh, update your SPF record, your text record on your DNS to include our IP space. And that way, when the receiver does that SPF check, it'll come back and authenticate. Our next question is from Jason. Uh, he wants to know specifically about the HTTPS interface. He says, is that a SOAP, REST, or other? That would be uh, REST. We do not offer SOAP uh, support. In, um, in SES, um, um, so it would be a RESTful uh, HTTPS interface. 
Uh, so Sergey asked our next question, and he wants to know, with the introduction of SES, are there now going to be restrictions on the amount of email that he can send using his own mail servers that are hosted on EC2? Absolutely not. Uh, the Think about it this way. Whatever limits uh, SCS has in place, um, whatever guidelines, are completely independent and, and, and intentionally so independent of how you uh, may run your, your business on EC2 when it comes to email sending. Um, you can, you know, I can't speak to EC2's limits, but they are completely independent of each other. So Kevin asked the next question. It's something that, that we covered a little bit in the webinar. It says, how do you prevent the message from being treated as spam? <laughs> Kevin? This one's from Kevin, yeah. Kevin, that's a, that's a good question. Thank you for asking that. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, a lot of this comes down to, you know, doing, doing your homework on what is considered uh, a good emailing practices. You need to make sure that the mail that you're sending out is not deemed as spam by your email recipients. Uh, and there are, there's a plethora of uh, sources on the Internet that you can look at. Uh, this industry of, of folks in, in, in this specific area that you can go to for more, uh, more information. But basically, you make sure that the mail is wanted, uh, that it's going to legitimate addresses that exist, um, and the, the, the recipients want that mail. That's really the, 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 the foundation, the key here. Um, now, on top of that, we do offer you feedback uh, through our service to tell you what sort of balances you're receiving. We hand you the complaints directly from ISPs that participate in our program. Um, as well to help enable you to determine what is, is high quality, um, and high quality here would be uh, uh, antithetical to spam, obviously. Um, uh, but really, that you know, make sure that you're sending messages people or, or uh, you know, email addresses uh, want, and that are going to addresses that exist, and you're sending content that is high quality. Of course, our next question is: Can SDS be integrated with a Microsoft SQL database mail service that is currently hosted on AWS? So you're basically using EC2 and um, and Microsoft SQL on AWS. And I'm wondering if you can integrate SES with that. Absolutely. I don't see any reason why you couldn't. Um, it would just simply be at that point for whatever the output of your uh, the, the database is on EC2, uh, you know, direct uh, direct that the message with the proper headers or the parameters rather via the API call um, to, to SES. So, Chris, a little bit earlier in the webinar, you made a statement about a low-quality email message. Right. Uh, a couple people wrote in questions wanting you to define what, what is a low-quality email message. Yep, absolutely fair question. Um, I'm going to have to deflect a little bit because we do have uh, metrics that we look at from our um, you know, from the, the SES uh, side of things to ensure that we are we are meeting the ISP expectations of sending mail that is high quality and you know kind of falling back to my previous answer what is high quality it's messages that are sent to addresses that exist it's messages that are sent to uh, recipients who don't complain uh, about the email uh, and there are some other factors in, in there as well that we look at that are part of our secret sauce that I, I can't really divulge um, but if if you're sending high quality mail you shouldn't hear much in the way of uh, you should be low noise uh, uh, ratio there. If everything is going as designed and your mail is going to where it needs to go and it's getting through and you're not hearing much in the way of complaints coming back or bounces coming back, chances are you're sending high quality mail. Of course, our next question is from Serena. She wanted to know if hard bounces of other Amazon SES users affect your list if there's an over overlap of email addresses. No. But good answer. <laughs> no, it is it's partitioned by user account. Uh, the next question is from Mike. Says, if we are using SDS to send emails from one of our lead forms to an internal email address, do we need to worry about the quality of the email messages being sent? And this is the follow-up is, or is the onus of the spam filtering on the lead form itself? Interesting question. If you're sending it to an internal address, I would assume that you you want that address to be legitimate, so we're not going to be getting 500 uh, uh, bounces back, uh, 500 code bounces. Um, I assume you won't be complaining about those, so that's that. you're right. Uh, the spam filtering at that point, the content filtering, the onus would be on the form to ensure that, you know, and again, I'm going to be intentionally um, kind of nebulous about this, but you can, you know, do a, 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 a search on the Internet. You can, there are plenty of resources out there. You can go look at your own spam folder 
uh, if you want to, but there are certain things you should avoid in content. And just using common sense here, I would be careful when you are using a, a form like that that's open to anyone on the net to come in and put whatever content they want in. I mean, you really are at their mercy unless you have sort of um, uh, front-end checks before that, that, that content is put into an email message and sent along because we will be doing content checking. So I the next question that James is talking about deals with hard balances because he asked, uh, will we get the email addresses back along with the reason for the failure? Absolutely. So when there is a hard bounce, we log that, uh, that hard bounce in our system. Uh, it comes back to uh, a return pass that we, we stamp on the, the outbound uh, message envelope. Uh, but then we forward that, bar, that bounce, that raw bounce, directly to, um, to you. So it, it can either be the return path that you specify in the, the parameter when you call um, SES, or it's just the from address that you specified. But we hand that raw message off to you, and it will show you everything that the ISP is willing to report on that bounce. And typically, I mean, it, it, it will almost always include the, the email address, but uh, usually they'll also give you some other uh, supporting information as to why it bounced. Chris Gerardo was wondering, uh, when they're sending over a 24-hour period, um, is that basically, you know, in the morning to night, is there, is there a hard lock time in terms of how you measure the 24 hours, or is, or is it a rolling time frame? It's a rolling time frame. We wanted to do that to ensure, and again, we're, you know, if, if folks have feedback on this, we're definitely, uh, we're, we're listening, um, but we want to do this to ensure that we weren't locked into any particular time zone uh, around around the globe. Uh, Jason had a question about, actually increasing, you know, his quota. And so, you know, if I have a good email history, how long would it take me to get up over 200,000? I'm not sure we can provide an exact answer to that. But. Right. So uh, I can't remember the exact amount. I'm going to skip back through uh, my, my presentation here. If you have 200,000, which you're trying to ramp to, again, assuming you're sending high-quality mail, uh, you can always see what the, the, the feedback is that our systems um, is logged on your, your mail program, the time to call and get feedback API. Uh, 200,000 would look approximately be around two weeks. Again, I can't give specifics here, but you're looking at about half a month. So Samuel is wondering, does the basic email API support attachments, or do you need the more complex one? At this time, we don't support uh, actual uh, attachments to uh, an, email, an outbound message. So either send email or send raw email. You can certainly link to attachments, uh, which we, we recommend in most cases, either for images or for files uh, that you'd like to send along. That way you can avoid um, any issues with the, the recipient um, uh, and potential false positives uh, with, with virus uh, scanners. But at this point, we don't offer attachments. But again, this is something that we are uh, definitely looking into. And I wouldn't be surprised if you see this come up as a feature we offer um, sometime in the near future. Uh, Josh has a question that's just about you know restrictions of who you can email and if we if we require things like opt-in lists or unsubscribe lists, et cetera. So Josh, that's a that's a really good question. I appreciate you asking that. Um, we want to be as hands off as possible. We, you know, with your mailing, we want to give you the tools to send email, but we're also imparting a level of trust to you that you are doing what's right by the recipients because we really see the email recipients as being our our end customers of the service. Um, but to that end, we won't dictate how you have to send, what specific requirements you have to meet. You know, um, we want to get some sort of uh, um, information, you know, on the forms that, that you submit, if you, especially if you're wanting to leapfrog the, the ramping process to get an idea of how you're sending and make sure that if you're wanting to send a large amount that it's going to a, a high-quality um, um, list. But we really we, we give you the responsibility to manage your own expectation of what quality is. Uh, having said that, we do um, we do suggest folks send email addresses <laughs> that have people behind them that uh, that want the messages. That I think going back to my original answer a while back, make sure you're sending to addresses that exist, and make sure you're sending to uh, to folks who want the messages in the first place. So Chris is talking about using Perl scripts, and that he's he's actually been able to successfully send text messages uh, using them. I'm wondering if there's a way he can use Perl scripts to send HTML messages. Um. I will have to defer you to the technical documentation on that question. Uh, I don't want to speculate. Uh, we do have a section, though, that specifically goes over how to send emails using the, uh, the Perl script. Uh, I believe that it's possible with HTML. You just um, you have to specify some additional headers. So Bob has a question. Say, wants to know if there's interfaces to SES that play nicely with XM. 
And he says, for example, send a message from your mail client to a mail server, which would then pass the messages on to SCS for delivery. Right. Uh, if I understand the question correctly, uh, how can you use an existing mail server today to send mail to Amazon SES? As I said, we don't offer SMTP support, but we do offer a script that's available, uh, and again, it's in the technical documentation, um, a script that you can put in place which will actually proxy between your MTA um, and SES, so you can speak uh, SMTP into the script, the script will then translate that into the correct API calls to Amazon SES. Great. The next question is from Danilo. That says, is the email verification done on the SES page, or does the sender assure, in quotation marks, that there is an email verification feature on their site? So, we, in order to, to, to keep a close, uh, you know, close watch on this. Right now, we, we, we feel um, that it's really important to have Amazon SES be the authoritative sender of that message. Um, again, you know, we've heard of, of questions like this uh, over the last couple of weeks, and we're looking at creative ways that we can potentially hand off of, uh, you know, or outsource that trust relationship, if you will. But we, right now, the only way to do that is for SES to send to originate that message to the recipient that they have to click on. Well, Chris, thanks for that answer. I mean, again, we just have a, a tremendous number of more questions that, that we could get through. We, we encourage you to take your questions and post them on the forum uh, so, that, so that we can get answers to your questions.